Good morning, guys. What's up? It is time for another stitch with me. Nice and quiet and relaxing. Still getting over my cold, but I'm almost there. So I'm feeling pretty happy about that. I have reestablished the. Uh... Do you guys remember this? Now, if you haven't been around for a really long time, you may not know what this is, but this was one of the very first things that my husband uh, basically got for me. And he literally made it himself. Uh, he got the fabric, got the little cushion thing for the top, put the bottle together, got everything I think at Michael's. And um, I kind of recently came upon, I, you know, in my cleaning looking for the dachshund, came upon it again and I'm like, oh, I gotta bust this baby out. Because this was actually quite um, friendly to me. Like it was very, um, very easy to keep track of all my needles this way and to be able to see like what different size needles I had so I'm gonna start using this again and uh, Especially you know since the blues one so Gotta love that Gots to love it All right, so we're gonna be doing rainy waterloo plays today and moreover we're starting a new page a new page on row three row three of row four Row, th row three of a total of four rows. How, how about if I say it that way? All right. The birds are excited. That came up here. We're going to do some stitching. Did some gritting last night. Wow, my video looks ridiculously sharp. I think I'm filming in a very high resolution right now. Very ridiculously high resolution. We'll see how that goes. Um, let's see here. Okay. Uh, what am I doing? What's going on? Birds are excited? Go eat your foods, birds. Eat your foods, birds. Guess I gritted it up last night. At least gritted up the first couple rows. Had to go back and find, for row, you know, for these different rows, they don't always go a perfect 10. And the, you know, they don't, you know, that page doesn't end right on the end of a, of a grid line, which would be nice, but they don't, and so you, that's definitely a thing you have to watch out for when you are doing the stitching. Let me get my stitching glasses here. Where did I put those? Did I put those? There they are. The birds. The birds. Hold on, I gotta fold this up so I can work on it. I'm going all the way back to the left left hand side of this piece so I've got to kind of gather my fabric a little better a little better let's see here and I need to order some well I don't know if I need to order floss or not I've got two colors on old world map 2 that I could virtually finish the page because I've got so much I gotta tighten this up so much to do. That's better. I like a certain amount of tenseness, tautness, however you want to say it. And so I just go around and pull a little bit and then it's kind of like fishing in a sense. You kind of take up the slack and there we go. But um, two colors that I am looking to use to fill in but I was stitching on it last night, and I'm like, oh, I'm so close. I just need these these two things. So hopefully I can find at least one. And if I can find at least one, then I'll order the other one along with probably some other, or who knows, maybe I'll go out and actually get it. That would be a novel idea nowadays for me. But go out and get it, finish the page, get started on page, what, 14 or something like that. But did some of that, did some of Reaper. Got some good Reaper progress done, and also started working on the Chicago Bears piece again. Realized I don't think I had made a mistake. I think that um, my problem is is that I look at that, and I'm looking at the two sides of the H, and I'm looking at the I, the letter I, and I'm just getting confused by looking at them. I was stitching more on it, and I was like double checking, double checking. I'm like, I don't think I'm actually wrong. I think this is going to be okay. So I stitched some more on it last night. I'm going to kind of just, hold on a second, I got a snack. I, I'm going to kind of uh, uh, just kind of chip away at it for a little bit and try to 
get there. But I gotta tell you, I don't really enjoy the colored patterns. The um, like when you have your patterns and it's got your grids and you know, or like you know, cross stitch collectibles where it's all black and white. I much prefer that over the color, um, just because it's so much easier to mark what you've done. And I don't think I got a black and white. I might have. But we shall see. We shall see. But Thursday I cleaned a bunch in the house. We're in the process of cleaning and just purging. Cleaning and purging, cleaning and purging. And I have... Um, it feels good, too. So I've been kind of like antsy. You ever get antsy when you feel like you just want to, like, I gotta get something done, and, but yet you're not motivated to do certain, like, I wasn't motivated to stitch as much, I wasn't motivated to, um, you know, to do, to do different things, and you clean yourself? You clean yourself? Yeah? Um, anyway, sorry, I'm distracted by the birds. But, uh, so I ended up, uh, just giving in to the whole, well, if I really want to organize and clean and throw things out, so let me just do that. So I started and went around the house and probably pulled together about two big bags worth of just knick-knack junk to get rid of. And, uh, I had tried to, uh... I to donate some of it at some points to um, like Salvation Army and stuff and there's a certain amount of stuff that I think around here at least that they're just not taking um, anymore because of uh, I think they just got too much junk it's you know that's the danger of gathering junk sometimes it's hard to get rid of but um, oh now you're doing it good job guys just cleaning off their feathers Anyway, so did that. Gonna do more of it. Have decided that I need to get a sort of a station set back up in my bedroom up here. There's a, we've got kind of a, it's not really a bookcase, it's like a big stand kind of thing that we had put in. Because at one point I'm like, oh, I got so much stuff, I need storage. And so we, we put this big thing up. We should have put it in the garage, but um, so we did that and then. Now it's like cluttered and I need to get rid of stuff. And I started looking through it, looking for the dachshund piece, and I'm like, I really just need to pull literally everything off of this, take this whole thing down, and get a computer, get my little laptop, my little mini laptop Chromebook thing set up so that I can do some writing. And because it's starting to get hot now, summer has arrived here in Colorado. And, uh,. It's going to be like almost 100 today, which is just oh, not my not my thing. Not my thing at all. I don't like it at all. So I'm going to be upstairs this weekend in the in the bedroom where the little portable air conditioner is. And I'm going to stay nice and cool up there. And I uh, should have a bee video out hopefully later today. And if not today, then tomorrow. Um, as soon as my voice goes back to 100%. We were planning on putting it out, and then my voice started getting all wonky because of the cold. And I was like, well, that's not going to work at all. ta -ta -la. All right, let's highlight a bit. Oops, did I throw things down on the floor? But it feels good getting rid of stuff. Just having less to manage, less to, to work about, worry about, less to put up. Chirp, chirp, chirp. I'm going to switch colors here. Chirp, 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 chirp. Wow. Here we go. Oh man. 
my neck finally went pretty much 100%. When I got sick, I didn't realize it for like a day or two, but I'm like, oh, my neck is fine now. My body had something else to worry about, so I was like, uh-huh. Wah-ha. Wee-hoo, wah-ha. So I think I got like 40, 40 different stitching, stitching pattern sites now up on the blog. I think I made enough room for like 120 or something ridiculous, but I need to, uh, I need to go in and cut that table down. That might help with the speeding up of the loading of the page and all that. Make it easier and faster for me to put things on there. But that would be good. Ah, oh. got the weekend off. I'm feeling pretty good about it. Kind of. Very much overtired myself this week. Stressing. Don't stress. Stressing's bad. But it feels good to have the day off. Husband is down checking on the bees. Hopefully, with all this, um, last time when he went to go check on them, they, uh, they hadn't been able to do a whole lot, honey wise. And primarily it was because we'd had so much rain. And when there's rain, the bees don't go out and get pollen. So um, that was a bit of an issue for them. But uh, we've had about three or four days now of consistent dry, warm weather, very warm weather. Bees ought to be cooking, cooking that honey. And so hoping that he can place some more honey supers on the hives, which honey supers are the extra hive boxes that go on top and they are filled with the honey that we actually will eventually take. So the extra honey that the bees don't quite need. At least that's what we tell them. Don't, don't tell them any differently. So, so that's how that goes. Boop, 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 ba doop, ba doop, ba doop. Boop, 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 ba doop, ba doop, ba doop. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Hopefully, we're gonna smoke some. We smoked some chicken last week, and I totally messed it up. I totally messed it up. And how I messed it up, my husband did a fantastic job of seasoning it, cooking it, it was awesome. And then I messed up because I didn't realize how he um, stores it. And what I had done was, he was like, can you go up there and shred it? And Because he was playing um, a game or something. He was kind of in a rough spot in the game. And I was like, yeah, sure, I'm not doing anything. I'll go up there and take care of it. And and I pulled it out of the smoker and went to go uh, do stuff with it. And did not, usually what he'll do is when we put it in like a plastic container, he'll pour some of the, the juices from the chicken and whatnot into the container so that everything stays nice and moist. And I did not do that. I neglected that very important step and because of that, that stuff dried out, unfortunately, and dried out. It still tasted good, just not as good as when he made it. So, still ate it all, that's for sure. It was very tasty this year, this week. And he made some more smoked cheese, which was really, really good. Let's highlight, shall we? Shall we highlight? Beep boop, beep boop, beep beep boop, beep boop. Do some more. Uh... 
up with this color. Beep boop, beep boop, beep boop. I can't remember what I got that from. It's like a Pixar movie or something. The whole beep boop, beep boop. Yeah, this is ridiculous. I'm shooting in like 4K or something ridiculous. Because this looks like amazing to me when I'm looking at this. And maybe I wasn't shooting correctly before. Or maybe, wait, maybe it's just my eyes. No, it still looks good. So maybe it's just my eyes with the... Um, which we'll call it. Oh, it looks pretty good. Hopefully that'll translate, and hopefully that it means I won't run out of memory on this thing in the first 20 minutes of doing something. But you know, about 60 minutes in, so no warnings about power yet. We'll see about memory. Memories. <sighs> I can't believe it's already like July pretty much. It's going to be July in just, I don't know, a couple days. Monday? Something like that? Tuesday? Monday. Tomorrow? I don't know. Something like that. And uh, it's awesome. Awesome. Because get through July is really the one month of the year where I don't really have a whole lot of sporting stuff to follow. At least stuff that I like to follow. I should be watching the World Cup, but gosh darn it, I'm just struggling with watching. And, uh, struggling with just watching TV, period. Period. Because I just got other things I want to do. Oh, that's, that's not even true. I'm playing video games, for sure. But... Oh, yeah. Didn't did make good progress on the Reaper though. I'm so happy about that. Like I said, I got that done. And then I think I'm gonna do some Ronnie Rowe. Whoops. Pulled that through from the other side. Let me find the back side here. There we go. Um got me some Ronnie Rowe. And what else? Well, got Oval Map 2. Got to get back on Apothecary Shop Baseball. Yeah. Got, I'm going to get a lot of stitching done, I think, this weekend, I think. As long as I don't spend the whole time stitching on, or playing computer games. But I think I won't because the computer to play video games on will be downstairs. And I will be upstairs where it is cold and lovely. Yeah, cold and lovely. Well, hi, boys. Maybe they miss me. They're like on the nearest, they're like really close to me on this side. And they're following the sand. Hey, she's not so bad. Let's go play with her. Let's go play with you. What do you think, boys? Gotta make sure that you guys stay warm or cool enough up here, too. Not too hot. Not too hot. But yeah, they've like, usually they're like, it's a pretty, it's like a three foot wide cage. And they're usually on the far end. But right now they're actually on the, I mean, they're about as close to me as they can possibly get. I mean, it thinks they missed me. That can't be true. That can't be true. That's impossible. Okay. I've got, I distracted myself and now I don't know where I'm at. Hold on, let me highlight Boop, beep, boop, beep, boop. And that one. And that one. It's nice and quiet. I like quiet. I very, very much like quiet. They're funny. We uh, acquired a couple of inexpensive patio chairs, just your normal, easy to clean patio chairs, and uh, so we're now occasionally sitting outside when it's not too hot and the bugs aren't bothering us and the zuzu's not bothering us. 
The biggest problem is the Zuzu bothering us because she likes to um, kind of, you know, be on top of us kind of when we're sitting out there. Check your hair. Let me get on top of you like all the time. So we try and throw the ball for her, and then she's like, I don't want to go chase the ball. And then Bailey's been acting all weird because Bailey gets all crazy and we go outside. Bailey just doesn't like it when things aren't in their place, I think. It's part of that cattle dog that's in her. And then she's barking. And then if Zuzu tries to chase after her ball, Bailey goes and corrects her. It's like, stop being crazy. Calm down. You'll notice that I'm using fairly short strands of floss. And you may be like, why are you doing that? Because you're just having to change your floss more often. Part of it is this, the, my inevitable snagging issue that I get on occasion because I don't stop to unwind my floss. Um, it's also just more helpful when I'm doing um, these stitch with me because I'm literally, I'm really tightly down on this piece. And by, um, let's see here, and this just makes it a little easier for me to manage said floss. So, like when I do Ronnie Row, I'll pull out like long pieces of floss to get a lot done because the Ronnie Row piece is just the long one color monochromatic thing. Thing. So you guys got any big plans in, in America here? We've got our big 4th of July celebration coming up here. And um, otherwise known as the night we sedate all the dogs. And because um, it, gets, it gets loud. We're hoping this year... The last couple of years have been pretty good with the fireworks outside. Um, it really depends on who decides that they feel like they need to be as loud as possible. Um, the f I think the first year that Mark was here for the 4th of July, um, it was like, and I'm not, I, I hate it when people say like, oh, it was a war zone. I mean, because nothing is a war zone but a war zone. But... Sound-wise, I mean, I, again, I know it's not as loud, but oh my goodness, it was like they were going off in our backyard, and for like an hour straight, I've never heard it be like that, I haven't heard it before, and I haven't heard it since be that loud, so somebody had a really very loud 4th of July, and then maybe grew up a little bit and decided not to do it the next year, I don't know. I just feel bad for the dogs. I feel bad for the veterans if it bothers them. Because, I don't know. That's just me. I'm not a big, I'm not really a big holiday person. I'm a big day off person, but I'm not a big holiday person. I never really have been. I think I would, but I'm not. What? I'm not. I can't believe you guys are sitting so close to me. That's so awesome. Carter's doing all right. I've I've really cut back on how often I feed Carter. Um, Carter is basically how do I say this? Well, when I went to that, hold on a second, let me. Okay, when I went to the when we went to the last reptile show that we went to. I talked with the um, folks there about, you know, how often should I feed my crested gecko? Because I put food in, I used to leave, like, I used to mix his, his, his meal replacement stuff up and put it with him, like, every other night. But then it would dry up and it would just, it would be like, okay, it's not, you know, I don't think he's really eating any of it. And, um, 
And so I was like, am I just wasting money and time by doing this? And they said, you know, they only feed their crested geckos, the folks that were there. Oh, let me highlight. They only feed them like twice a week. And I'm like, well, that makes sense because it doesn't seem to really eat very much. And uh, they said, yep, no, they, they really don't for the most part. And uh, so, oh, oh, crap, I'm highlighting the wrong things. Highlighting the wrong colors. No. That just means I gotta go back over that color and I'll get that all squared away. It's okay. It's okay. Don't worry. But uh, yeah. So the um, so they were like, yeah, just you know, feed them a lot less. Feed them in smaller, smaller little containers. Feed them less, and see how that goes. And you know what? It's it's been better. And he may not think it's better because I think he wants to eat when he wants to eat, but. He sort of always had things just given to him. I mean, his prior owners are awesome friends that let us have them. Um, you know, alternated, you know, what food they put in there. And I'm not really doing crickets any longer because I don't really know if he eats the crickets. And with the meal replacement food nowadays, you really don't need it uh, so much. They, you know, they put enough stuff in this. He seems to be doing okay, let's just say that. But... I can tell now he gets more active um, towards the evenings when he seems hungry. Like you can tell he's gonna start looking around and you know wanting some, some wanting something. And so so that's what I end up doing. Huh? I'm just staring at this for a second. I'm gonna do this color. Do some three seven eight seven. Ooh yeah. But uh. So that, because finally, I think I hadn't fed him in like a week, and every night I go and I, you know, I humidify his, his terrarium and let him do his thing, and then, um, like two nights ago, he was up there and he was crawling around when I went to put him up at night, or not put him up, but, you know, kind of cover his terrarium at night, and I was like, all right, well, let me put some food out for you and see what you do this time, so I put some food out, and... What I do is I put them in these like much smaller little plastic containers just because they're just a lot easier to manage. And I smoothed out the top of it so that if he went in and actually like, you know, licked it, I'd see the furrows where he licked it. And sure enough, I saw them the next day. He had two big old licks that he took. And that was enough for him. And, uh, and that probably will be all he eats for the next week. But that was enough for him. And um, so I was pretty happy with that. I was like, that's all right. I feel like I feel like I finally figured out what he or what works best with him. I shouldn't say what he wants, but what works best with him. So that's good. The fish are still being the fish. Everybody's doing good there. Birds are obviously the birds. I need to do a good cleaning on the birds cage this weekend. We can get a few more things out of this room. This big table that I use, I'm not going to move this into the other room. I think I might have a smaller table or I'll just jerry-rig something to use for, like to put my little laptop, my, my little mini Chromebook on there. Um, because, ooh, ooh, wow, my, my, my sight here was way off. On where I needed to be. Dun 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 dun. Here we go. But uh, I should be pre I should be pretty happy with that. I like I'm always moving around the house, constantly moving around the house, setting up different workstations for like three months, and then I'll move the workstation. I just get more done sometimes if I just change things up. I'm sleeping better and I'm not taking the naps. I'm cutting back on my carbs. I think we talked about it. I don't know if we talked about that or not last time, but I've been cutting back on my carbs a little bit because I need to get a little healthier. I need to get rid of some of this extra weight I'm carrying around. And uh, so I, for me, what works best is 
I mean, overall calorie reduction, but along with that comes um, carb reduction. So just try to minimize bread and really minimize sugar, trying to get no sugar, and uh, try to eat more veggies when that happens. And, but So I am f definitely feeling better. Lost a little bit of weight. Doing it kind of on the slow side, which is good because if you try to go too fast, it tends to bounce back on you, me. Bounce back onto me. And so, and also just sometimes I just don't eat during the summer. I remember, um, I don't know, it was like five summers ago. It was so hot that summer, and I just didn't feel good because of the heat. And I actually. I think I spent like a month where the only thing I ate every day was like at lunchtime I would go over and get a, a Cold Stone Creamery. It's like ice, really, really good ice cream with like ho horrible bad toppings and I still lost weight because that was all I would eat all day long. But it was all I felt like I could eat. It was really weird. I haven't had one of those summers since, but I don't like the heat. I grew up in it. Grew up in Georgia, and stayed in stayed in stayed indoors a lot. But I don't appreciate it so much here. Now we do have air conditioning in this house, which is great. It's not terribly powerful. It'll keep it from getting above about 77, 78, depending upon the outside temperature. But it's a it's like a quad level. It's like a split level with like four floors crammed into like about two and a half floors like just the way that they're sort of offset and that can kind of make it difficult for the air conditioner to do its thing so that's why i ended up getting the room air conditioner because that way we just save money we don't use the house air conditioner really and we just i just plan on going upstairs ah snack um i plan on coming upstairs here and doing my stuff up here which which is good it gives me a break from the dukes which is necessary because they just so dang needy they're sort of the opposite I'm not I'm not a needy person I don't think I'm a needy person I think I'm pretty much like more of a anti needy like leave me alone person I just want to do my stuff. I just want to do my stuff. But. I needed to pause it there for a second because if you heard my breath right before that, I was all like, it was all like that rattle from still having a bit of an issue. What really turned the corner for me, I think, was on Thursday, I got some Mucinex. And, uh, I was, I hadn't even thought about getting that. I was like, oh, I've got Dayquil, and I've got, you know, I'm fine. And, uh, no big deal. And then I had to go pick up a prescription, and I was standing there at the pharmacy, and I was like, hey, give me some of that, uh, what do you call it? Give me some of that stuff. What did I just do? No, oh, didn't do that right. That's that's what I did. I did that totally wrong. Um, and uh, I was like, oh, I really need some of that music next. And that helped. And the funny thing was, I woke up. Once I started taking it, and it started kind of, you know, draining my sinuses better, I woke up the next morning, and it, it was, it's kind of gross, guys. And it kind of had drained all over me. <laughs> it's very unsexy. And uh, I was like, well, I'm breathing better. i got to wash my face now, but it's all good. So. So that was good. Feeling better, getting everything out. Looked at some pattern sites. Well, of course, because I'm doing the, the list on my on my blog, but um, doing some pattern sites, just checking them out, you know, just seeing what 
there's anything I want to do. And moreover, I just, I look at them, I'm like, yeah, I really want to just work on what I've got. I think if I finish some of these smaller projects and I get them done, I might need some smaller projects, but that, I don't see me buying any of those things until late in the year. Oops. Ah. Ah. E, ooh, ah. Oh. All right. Boop, boop, ba doop. Boop. this one off and start a new one. Oh, I'm not even sitting right. Goodness. That was me moving the chair. Oh, now the dogs are upset. What was that? <laughs> Scary. Well, Jelly would be upset. She doesn't like overhead sounds. She's going to be the worst one when it comes to the storm, so I'm going to sedate her ahead of time. Ugh. Stab. Oh, man. Stretch. You must stretch periodically when you cross-stitch. So that you don't get too, as they say in the South, in the Midwest, stove up. Where does that expression come from? Is that just because the stove is like metal and it's kind of stiff and it creaks and it I don't know. I had some crazy dreams this week. I know I just like totally ran, just jumped into a tangent here, but I had a dream that I um, got to see Rafael Nadal and Roger Federer play in a match at like a neighborhood tennis facility where there was like a couple little bleachers, but it was actually indoors, so it was like a gymnasium sort of thing, and they were playing. Don't ask me. Well, that was just crazy. Um, I think I've forgotten a few of the other ones. That was the most memorable one that really stood out to me. The um, I think that between being sick and the and the cold drugs gave me some strange dreams. Booty, 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 booty. Booty, 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 booty. Boop, 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 boop. The Canadian neighbors are going to be fully moving in. the baby. The baby who at two, one and a half, two years old is already walking on skates. Like a true Canadian. Good job, kid. Just in time for Canada Day on Monday. Happy Canada Day to all my Canadian watchers and subscribers and followers. Uh, good on you. Congratulations. Have a great time. Ah. Fargo has been getting some extra, um, a few extra, uh, how do I say this, 
perks. Uh, he's been allowed upstairs a bit more. He doesn't go for the cat food right away. He really doesn't. I think part of him does, but I think he's so freaking scared of the cat that he doesn't even attempt it. Like, I think he feels like he might die if... He is, it, literally, like, when Coco would come up, you'd just hear her screaming and running and, you know, in, screaming in mock fear. Because, let me just tell you, the dog would scream, run away, stop, turn around, and then make her way back towards the cat. <laughs> so, it sounded terrible, but it, it wasn't it wasn't that way at all. And it was, it was, honestly, it was part annoying and part hysterical. And so... Because it just, ha it, it depended. If it happened at like 6 o'clock in the morning when I was still in bed, annoying. But if it happened when I was up here watching it, then it was funny. And I still find it ironic that I lost the dachshund at the same time that I lost, or that we lost Coco. It is weird. Oh, look, I got all the way down here that I don't even, I don't think I have a, yeah, I don't have a, um, a thing marked here. I'm going to stop there. Um, let me see here. What can I do? Okay, I'm going to come up here and stitch a little bit in this part. So I'm not going to go any further down is what I'm saying. And uh, until I, because I really should just stitch and then move down. It's just easier with hoops. Easier to keep track of. Ooh. Nice. Oh wow, these are cool. I'm gonna come all the way over here. One, two, three. So this goes, there's a lot of this diagonal pattern here. Once I get this up and loaded, or once I get this done, this video done, and I take it up, I'm going to start working on the bedroom, pulling everything down, pulling apart the big stand, because a change is going to come, and uh, that's going to be good. Ooh, I know, I could pull out my, ooh, except I gotta watch the sugar, but the old, um, yogurt, frozen yogurt maker, perchance. I think it was this time last year that, um, the fam was all out here, up in Estes. I think it was, pretty sure it was. Man, that seemed like that was, like, into summer. With the cold weather we had this in June, and as busy as we are, it really has, like, just... Oh man, it's just flying by, which I like it. I get, I'm getting stuff done. I like it, but because I mean, honestly, summer is my least favorite season by far. I like, by like, a lot. So, alrighty. Do 
getting a lot done on this stitch with me. It's easy when it's like rainy water place. One of you guys, um, I think it was um, a comment on my blog and said that you had just bought this piece and you were looking forward to getting it started, that you were fairly new to cross stitch and you were going to jump into this, which is awesome. Welcome. And um, I thought that Rainy Waterloo is an excellent, like, if you really like the art, it's an excellent early or easier um, cross stitch, full, full coverage cross stitch to do because it doesn't require very many colors. You know, I think it's like maybe 20 at most. And like a lot of like what here is like maybe f three to four colors is most of what's there. And so it just makes it easier, less floss changes, less chance of making mistakes. And positive reinforcement is what we want when it comes to helping people love and get excited about this hobby of ours that we love. We love this hobby. Been listening to the one audiobook about organ transplantation, which is pretty interesting. And it's it's fairly generalized. It it does it walks you through like the different organs, you know, starting when do they start with the kidney? I think the kidney is the one of the easiest ones and technically to transfer because it's just there's so few, you know, there's like renal vein, renal artery, and the ureter is really all you need to, to connect. And um, so it's it's technically easier. And they started with that, and then they, um, I want to say they tried, I think they jumped from that, I want to say right to the heart. Because when they discovered, when they basically invented the, the um, cardiopulmonary bypass machine and created the ability to have your heart be bypassed and have all your blood be circulated and oxygenated and all that while you're having heart surgery. Once they figured that out, actual heart surgery is technically not that crazy. And so, so then they did that. Then they were talking about like just lung transplants and then they tried this and then they said well lung transplants and then talking about then going into heart and lung transplants sometimes or are, are even easier less things to worry about and then um, talking about pancreatic transplants which is crazy but to be able to cure people of diabetes especially type 1 diabetes where you if you don't have your sugar you know if you don't have your insulin and your sugar right, you can die easily because um, it's so hard to manage. Um, talking about, you know, the breakthrough and, and discovering how to do that was really cool. And then they talk about the liver because I think it's been the liver that has been seemingly so far the, more, the most difficult organ to, um, to switch. Um, I want to say probably because there's more attachments. I I forget exactly. I'm in the book and I'm trying to remember exactly what what it was that was said. But um, it's pretty fascinating. And the guy tells his own stories. And he also interviews famous pioneers in transplant history. And and you got to think, you know, on one hand, the guts of these guys to just do this. You know, to say, we just got to try. But on the other hand, 
when you don't have any other choice, and it's either, well, I'm either going to give up and that's going to be it, or I'm going to, you know, let these guys try. I may not wake up from the surgery because I may not survive it, but if I wake up with a new heart or this or that, I could live another five years or 20 years or, or whatever, you know, even even six months for some people. I mean, um, but the difficulty of it, i got to highlight, the difficulty of it in the beginning was really um, what impressed me it, from a standpoint of sticking with it. Like, they didn't get, you know, the, it, it, they would sometimes do like 30 in a row and not get anybody to ever leave the hospital. And then, the, you know, number 31 did. And to actually have them continue working at it, to have others be like, yeah, keep working on it, keep working on it, and we're going to get there and have the techniques improve, have the screening you know, procedures improve, um, the, the immunosuppressive drugs to prevent rejection of the organs improve. You know, it all just, they just kept working at it. And it's so much better now, the ch you know, the going through the surgeries, I mean, it's still, t you know, very difficult, but it's so much there's such a brighter future. It's just, uh, it's pretty fascinating. So I'm not sure how much more I got in the book left to do, but I should be getting pretty close to getting the end, maybe another three or four hours of listening. And then I've got, uh, what's the word? Then I've got The Frankenstein book. I started listening to that one a little bit again, kind of ease myself into the gruesomeness of the Dean Koontz book. But I definitely need to look at some other ones. I have some on my Audible account that <laughs> I downloaded and never fully listened to them. So I've got like a bunch of books there that I can jump to. So I plan on doing that at some point coming up here. That will be fun. But we'll do one more strand here and then I'll call it a stitch of ruski so I can get started on some of the cleaning. Cleaning and organizing. Yee haw. Uh, but I've got I've got I like a lot of nonfiction, so I've got a book on like how they created the um the Manhattan Project. I've got um, um, oh, did I tell you guys that I finished that? Uh, or did I finish it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I finished it. The David uh, McCullough book, um, the one that I was listening to. <sighs> I, that's a that's a bad sigh, isn't it? That's like a negative sigh. I was not impressed, and that's been the first time that I've been disappointed, I think, with the David McCullough book. I know he's he's getting older, and we're probably at the end of his writing career here, which is sad because the guy is just brilliant. Um, and this was definitely sort of like a partial, a partial book, um, a lot shorter than it than it probably should have been, a lot more all over the place in scope. Um, and uh, not as oh, just not as good. And the thing is also is that it's it's hard. I don't know. History is hard sometimes because of the brutality, the way it had. I mean, in some ways, it had to be. You know, eat or be eaten, and kill or be killed, or you know so-called progress is made the way progress is made it's just it's i'm a sensitive soul and uh it's tough now to to listen to some things and be like oh, i don't know ah a big old hair in here somewhere there it is 
can feel the big old hair. Okay. This one. There's that one. Very cool. But, uh, oh, and uh, another funny thing is, have you guys, uh, we've, uh, have you guys ever watched How I Met Your Mother? Uh, American sitcom from, I don't know, a decade ago or whenever it was, over a decade ago. I never really watched it, um, really never watched it at all, even though I really like Neil Patrick Harris. But, uh, I, when my husband and I got together, he encouraged me to watch it. He thought I would love it, and indeed I did. I absolutely, once I finally got into it, I watched all whatever, seven, eight, whatever, how many years of seasons it was, really fast, and um, enjoyed it very much, except for that final episode that I'm still bitter about it. And it's funny because every once in a while, my husband and I will both get on a tangent where we're just like, I can't believe that, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to ruin it for you if you've not seen it, but let's just say that the whole premise of the show was one thing, and then in the last episode, they chickened out and changed, changed things so that it wasn't as perfect as it should have been. And... Um, We had we I, I, we had a dis we had a very animated discussion and where we were both like, and I can't believe they did that and we we're like yeah I know and and uh, well, that's just you know they chicken the producers just chickened out and da da and we were just like we were both ranting about it and it's funny because the show has been over for like what five plus years or whatever and uh, we we're both still mad about it and I'm like you know that's part of the reason why I kind of stopped watching television like television series for the most part because they became very unsatisfying in a way like if I if I cared about a story it seemed like it just I am gonna sidetrack here it seemed like it just wouldn't end well and then I'd be like well I feel like I wasted time because all that built up to something that I didn't like so that's just me being silly but I'll I'll be back in I'll be back into watching TV in a couple of years and then I'll be like oh this Game of Thrones have you guys seen this Game of Thrones movie that was amazing and I'll be so far behind I'm always like that brilliant 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 look at all the stitching that got done guys look at all the stitching this is incredible. Pretty happy about the level of stitching. Might come back to it, might not. This may be all I do this week. We'll see. With this piece, I hope not, because it is supposed to be the focus piece, right? So I'm supposed to get a lot more done on this one. But we'll see. We shall see. I'll put some pictures up on the blog, and y'all will be able to see how things are going. We'll get some stuff up there, and I'm going to get over this cold this weekend, and my baby birds, hi baby birds, hi babies, and you're actually standing there with your back to me, which is even more impressive. I like it. Good job. Of course, it does make it easier for you to fly away quickly, doesn't it? Yeah, instead of facing me. That's all right. Um, I think the birds like me now. Do you like me? Oh, that's awesome. All right, well... Have a great rest of your weekend, your holiday. If you're having a holiday, have a great holiday. We are working at, let's see, where is it? Bill and Ted here, whatever their names are. We're working at this area down here for them. And uh, 
yeah, this is coming along. Because then we're going to do this, and we're going to come all the way out. And once we get this part done, that's going to look amazing. So, but let's all get to stitching, shall we? Have a great weekend, and I will see you guys super soon. And I'll see you on the blog even before that. Take care.